Welcome to the SAS tutorial on logistic regression. First, I'll show you how to conduct logistic regression with categorical predictors. We'll be using the data set called YRBS13. You can find it in the PH205 folder. Go ahead and copy that to your class dat folder. We'll be using four variables in this data set, sex, grade, Hispanic slash Latinx ethnicity, and bullied on school property during the past 12 months. The research question is, are sex, grade, or Hispanic slash Latinx ethnicity predictors of being bullied at school? So let's identify our outcome and predictor variables. The outcome is bullied at school, and the predictors are grade, sex, and Hispanic Latinx ethnicity. It's important to identify the level of measurement for all the variables so we know what we're working with. So we can see sex is a two-category variable, grade has four categories, Hispanic YN has two categories, bullied YN, note there's an underscore here, has two categories as well. Because our outcome has two categories, logistic regression is the appropriate analysis. So if you haven't already, go ahead and run your libname statement. Next, we want to inspect variables and run descriptive statistics. And by doing so, we can check assumption one, which is that we have a binary outcome. So let's double click on the data set. We can see we have 13,583 total observations. And although there are more variables in the data set, we will be using only those four in the research question. Let's close out of the data set and proceed to run descriptive statistics for the variables in the research question. As we mentioned before, all four variables in the research question are categorical. So we can use a proc freak statement to generate tables for these variables simultaneously. Let's take a look at our descriptive statistics and make sure everything is coded the way the codebook says it was. And we can indeed confirm that our outcome variable bullied YN has two categories. So that means assumption one is met. We may also want to create some descriptive graphics to look at the distribution of each variable on its own or for each predictor outcome combination. And doing this could help inform our alternative hypotheses. So I'm just going to go through these slides quickly instead of also doing it in SAS at the same time. I think at this point you guys are pretty good at creating graphics in SAS. So I just want to show you an example of looking at a single variable. So this is the distribution of bullied at school in the past 12 months. And like any good graph, we have our n, and this is taken from the frequency table. This is how many observations are in this particular variable. And we have our number of missing. And so the other thing we can do is create graphics to look at the combination of the outcome with each predictor. So here's the relationship between sex and bullied. This is helpful if we want to understand the direction of the relationship between the predictor and outcome. So we can see here that females appear less likely to be bullied than males. We could do the same thing for grade. It looks like as grade increases, bullying decreases. Again, we can do the same thing for Hispanic YN, and we can see the direction of the relationship here looks as though being bullied is less frequent among students with Hispanic slash Latinx ethnicity. Here's the SAS code if you'd like to find the numbers, the ends, for these graphics. You can see here that you can create a table for each predictor by, that's what the star means, the outcome. So sex by bullied, grade by bullied, and Hispanic YN by bullied. So when we run these tables in SAS, Here's what we get. We have sex by bullied, grade by bullied, and Hispanic YN by bullied. And we would find the ends in these tables by looking at the total here. So for the combination of sex and bullied, 13,504 is the total number of observations in this table, and there are 79 missing. We can move on now to step two which is stating our null and alternative hypotheses and setting the alpha value. The null hypothesis is that none of the predictors will be associated with bullying. And then we need to create a separate alternative hypothesis for each predictor in the model. So we have three predictors, three alternative hypotheses. We can make these hypotheses directional based on what we saw in the graphics. Now we can move on to the logistic regression analysis in SAS, uh, but first we need to set up our model. Here is what logistic regression looks like. It's proc logistic data in your folder and data set, model, outcome variable, then our predictor variables, and we'll request R squared. As we set up the model, the first thing we want to think about is the coding of the outcome. 
So here bullied is coded one for yes and two for no. SAS will automatically model the odds of the lowest coded value. So here SAS will model the odds of being bullied. And that's good, that's what we want. However, if we wanted SAS to model the odds of the higher coded outcome, which is not being bullied, we could add this descent option, D-E-S-C, at the end of the first line. And so that just tells SAS to model the odds of the higher coded outcome value. We want SAS to model the odds of being bullied, so we will not include this descent option in our model. After we've looked at the coding of the outcome, we want to look at the coding of the predictor variables and make sure that we're comfortable with the reference category as the lowest coded value, which SAS uses by default. For sex, the lowest coded value is female, so that means SAS will model the odds of being bullied for males coded two, compared to females, coded one, which is the reference category. For Hispanic YN, that means that SAS will model the odds of being bullied for students who are not Hispanic slash Latinx, coded two, compared to those who are coded one, the reference category. Here, grade has four categories, so how do we know which categories will be compared with which other categories? Any categorical predictor with more than two categories is a class variable. It's called a class variable in SAS. Grade is indeed a class variable because it has four categories. So we need to ask SAS to show us the results for each category separately by including a class command. We insert the class command into the second line of the model. We say class, then list the class variable, in this case grade. Then we can set the reference category for grade. If we want the reference category to be ninth grade, we know that one is the coding for ninth grade. We can say ref equals one, and don't forget these little quotation marks on either side. Then a backslash and param equals ref. This means the SAS will show you on the output that one is the reference category for each comparison. When we set the reference category for grade as one, ninth grade, that means every other grade will be compared to the ninth. If we wanted to compare other categories, we could run the model again with a different reference group. For example, we could make the reference group three, which is 11th grade, and that means every other grade will be compared to the 11th grade. So let's go ahead and run our model and interpret the results. The first thing I always look for in the output is this probability modeled statement. And this tells us if SAS modeled the odds of the correct outcome category. And here we see that SAS did model the outcome one, which is yes, and that's what we wanted. The next thing we should look for in the output is this testing global null hypothesis table. And this tells us whether the overall model is significant we interpret the likelihood ratio p-value. The next thing we look for is the r-squared table, and we want to interpret this adjusted r-squared. Next, we want to find out which predictors were significantly associated with the outcome, and we do this by looking at the analysis of maximum likelihood estimates table, specifically at the p-values for the predictors. Remember, we should interpret only significant predictors. If there's a predictor that is not significant, we just say this predictor was not significantly associated with the outcome, adjusting for the other variables in the model, and then include the p-value and confidence interval at the end of the sentence. Now we can interpret the odds ratios for each significant predictor. For a categorical variable, the odds ratio is the odds of the outcome in the non-reference category compared to its reference category. So let's start by interpreting the odds ratio for sex. Remember that female is coded one and male is coded two, so female is the reference category. So we can say that odds of being bullied are 0.61 times lower for males, the non-reference category, compared to females, the reference category, after adjusting for the other variables in the model. And then we include the p-value and confidence intervals. The confidence intervals are from this table, the p-values are from the table we just looked at, the analysis of maximum likelihood estimates table. Remember that adjusting or controlling for the other predictors in the model means that the other variables are held constant. Categorical variables are held constant at their reference category, and scale variables are held constant at their mean value. And so you may have noticed that the odds ratio for sex is not in the direction we hypothesized. We thought the bullying would be lower among females compared to males, but here we see that males have a lower odds of bullying compared to females, and that's because we are adjusting for the other predictors in the model. So we can say that odds of being bullied are 0.61 times lower for males compared to females 
females among students of non-Hispanic slash Latinx ethnicity who are in ninth grade because non-Hispanic Latinx is the reference category for that variable and ninth is the reference category for grade. And so this means that the other predictors in the model play a role in the relationship between sex and being bullied. And so although overall females are less likely to be bullied than males, once we account for ethnicity and grade, we can see that that relationship has reversed. Moving on to our next significant predictor, Hispanic YN, we could interpret this odds ratio as the odds of being bullied are 1.18 times higher for students with non-Hispanic Latinx ethnicity, the non-reference category, compared to students with Hispanic Latinx ethnicity, the reference category, after adjusting for sex and grade, p-value confidence interval. And now for grade, we will interpret a separate odds ratio for each grade comparison. Here grade two versus one means 10th grade versus ninth grade. And we can say that the odds of being bullied are 0.79 times lower for students in 10th grade compared to students in ninth grade, the reference category, after adjusting for the other predictors in the model. Moving on to 11th grade, we can interpret this odds ratio. The odds of being bullied are 0.5 five, seven times lower for students in 11th grade compared to students in 9th grade after adjusting for the other predictors in the model. And finally, we can interpret the odds ratio for 12th grade as the odds of being bullied are 0.43 times lower for students in 12th grade compared to students in 9th grade after adjusting for the other predictors in the model. And these findings about grade are consistent with our alternative hypothesis based on our descriptive statistics, which showed that as grade increases, being bullied decreases, and we can see this trend here. We may want to turn odds ratios into percentages and so we can use this formula. And note that this formula is slightly different for negative and positive ORs. If we wanted to turn the odds ratio for sex into a percentage, it's negative, so we subtract it from one and end up with 39.3% lower odds of the outcome among the non-reference category compared to the reference category after adjusting for the other predictors in the model. Since the odds ratio for Hispanic YN is positive, we subtract one from the odds ratio and end up with 18%. 0.2%. The example I just showed you was logistic regression with three categorical predictors. In this next example, I'll show you logistic regression with a scale predictor because it's a little bit different in terms of needing to check another assumption and in its interpretation. So let's run a new analysis with a scale level predictor age, making the research question is age associated with being bullied at school. We're using the same data set, the same outcome, just a new predictor, age. Let's go ahead and run descriptive statistics for age. And we can see here that it is indeed a scale variable. Next, let's state our null and alternative hypotheses and set our significance level alpha. The null hypothesis is no significant association between age and being bullied. And our alternative hypothesis is that there is a significant association between these two variables. We'll set our alpha 0.05. Next, we need to set up our logistic regression equation. The model looks the same with a scale predictor as it did with our categorical predictors. Before we run the model, we should check the outcomes reference category, one, bullied, two, not bullied. So since we want to model the lower coded value, we will not include a descent option. The number two and three steps for setting up our logistic regression model are not applicable because we only have a scale level predictor. We don't have any categorical predictors. So our regression model will look like this. Let's go ahead and run it. Now, before we interpret the results, we need to check assumption two, no significant outliers. This assumption applies only to scale level variables. We don't need to do it for categorical variables. The way we check assumption two is to create a box plot of the scale predictor by the dichotomous outcome, and then check that box plot for outlying observations. And we'll create a box plot just like we have created many box plots before using the drop down menus in task and utilities. So we'll generate a box plot that looks like this. We can see that mean age looks similar for students who were and were not bullied, and we don't see any visible outliers. Now we can move on to interpreting results. We can look at this probability modeled statement to make sure that SAS modeled the outcome that we wanted it to, and it did. Next, we can see if the overall model is significant. It is. So we can move on to interpreting the R-squared statistic. Next, we can identify significant predictors in the model. 
We only had one predictor here, and it was significant. We can now interpret the odds ratio for our significant predictor. For a scale level predictor, the generic interpretation is that for every one unit increase in the predictor, the odds of the outcome change by odds ratio point estimate after adjusting for the other predictors in the model. And like the odds ratios we talked about earlier, we can turn this into a percent and interpret it as for every one year increase in age, odds of being bullied at school decrease because less than one by 22%. So we are done with the examples and I just want to provide a brief summary of binary logistic regression in SAS. Remember the outcome must be dichotomous. When we set up the model, we need to check the reference category of the outcome and each predictor and for categorical predictors with more than two categories, we can use a class statement to set the reference category. We can also set the reference category for binary predictors in this class command if we wanted to. When we interpret the model output, when we interpret model output, we start by checking for significant outliers for scale predictors by creating a box plot and looking for outlying observations. We next check the significance of the model, interpret R squared, identify significant predictors, and finally interpret the ORs for the significant predictors. And in our sentence, we include the p-value and the confidence intervals corresponding to those ORs. That concludes today's tutorial on logistic regression in SAS.